What is going on my peeps and man, Versatiles, back with another video, back here to talk about the opening episode for season two of The Mandalorian. Yes, yeah, season two dropped today, Friday, October 30th. Oh my goodness. Oh, yo, Star Wars is back, baby. When you got Jon Favreau and you got Dan Filoni on the helm making shows, <laughs> We're getting that Star Wars life, baby. We're getting that Star Wars. Before we get into the details of this episode, how I felt about it, what happened, if you guys haven't already, ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos. So that way we can sit back, chillax, and see what's cracking. Now let's get into season two, episode one of The Mandalorian. So we have Billboard, uh, Billboard, <laughs> Bill Burr pop up in episode six of season one as a comedian to make his his cameo for Star Wars. And so far, season one has started off with John Leguizamo playing the opening, you know, you, you guess you could say quote unquote villain who kind of also opens up and expands what season two is gonna kind of be about. John Leguizamo plays a creature called Gore Koresh. He basically like runs some underground fight club. And Mando Din, you know, uh, with the child, roll through trying to look for some information how he can access you know additional coverts as he calls them to that way he can travel through the outer rim and try to find the child's people and his species or the jedi one of the two and instantly he gets played and basically gore koresh basically lets us know what's basically going to be taking place throughout season two of the mandalorian he tells mando that beskar steel price has been increasing meaning it sounds like the Mando, the Mandalorians are being hunt down. It seems like they're now the, the ones struggling. <laughs> and, and you got the Crusaders and other bounty hunters coming after the Mandalorians. So, of course, Din, Din got turned on, but Din handled them. He had the classic little scene we saw in the, in the teaser trailer of the child closing his little uh, <laughs> hamper, if you want to call it that. <laughs> He's a traveling hamper and then Mando handled them. He got information about going to Tatooine. Left the guy for dead this time. It is like some creatures with some red eyes. I don't know their names, but they were already around the area. They, they, they pray at night. And so he shot the lights out and of course they fed on Gore Koresh. Kind of different from the opening episode of season one when he actually took out the guy for, you know, a bounty. You know, now he's kind of doing things a little different since the guild, the bounty guild is basically no more. So he goes to Tatooine. Peli Motto is back from episode five, the mechanic, and is from the gunslinger episode. She's there. She's like, oh, hey, you back? Oh, hey, you need some help? Da, da, da. And so her little little droids, of course, are trying to go. And she's like, hold up. You remember, he don't like you all. So y'all y'all stay away from, from the Razor Crest. He's like, hey, I don't mind this time. She's like, oh. Oh, so now all of a sudden you like droids. Go, go guys, go ahead. <laughs> and so she, he asked her about uh, any Mandalorians that's been through. She's like, there was one that was at um, some uh, Maz Pelego or something like that, um, which is like a city or whatever in Tatooine. And so he goes out there and sure enough, what appears to be a Mandalorian enters the cantina and he takes his helmet off. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. And then come to find out, you know, you're excited because it's Boba's, it's Boba Fett's uh, armor. And you're like, oh, come to find out it's not Boba Fett. <laughs> it's Timothy Oliphant, a very great actor, funny, and fits this world of Star Wars. His, the character he plays, his name is Cobb Vanth. And he's considered the marshal in, th in this part of Tatooine, this city, basically. And he talks about how he found the armor off of the Jawas and I'm sure as we all know from episode six um, of Star Wars I'm trying to remember the name of the episode is it the Return of the Jedi or the Empire Strikes Back it's one of the two I can't believe I can't remember but episode six we know the Sarlacc pit Boba Fett gets swallowed up and of course he's presumed dead and I guess in the comics technically he did die or he didn't live that much longer after that so the Jawas basically salvaged his armor from what was spit up by probably the, the Sarlacc pit. And he, Timothy Oliphant, had to basically survive a, 
the instant killing from like these mind troopers who tried to take over the city instantly when the empire fell. And so he found the armor from the Jawas because he had some crystals that he stole off of the mind troopers when he made his escape, exchanged it for the armor. He came back, took them out, and then all of a sudden they kind of like re regained some, some esteem for the city and kept, you know, creeps out. So that's how he actually came across Boba Fett's armor. And then him and Mando were about to kind of have a standoff when the crate dragon that that basically sleeps in an old Sarlacc pit came through the city and like took some people out or whatever and then they decided to make a deal to help each other try to take out the crate dragon. Well, Timothy Oliphant or Cobb Vanth is like, well, I know where he sleeps. I'll take you there. So as they get there, they have to stop because some wolf things, some Star Wars wolves, I don't know the name of them either. If y'all want to help me down in the comments, go ahead. They pop up and then Mando's like, oh, I know them. So he like calls out or whatever. And it's really him calling out to the Tusken Raiders who basically control or are the masters of these little Star Wars wolves or dogs. And then he's like, oh, he starts talking to them and Cobb Vanth is like, yo, you, you want to tell me what's happening? He's like, they want to help too, basically. <clears throat> and so they try to discuss trying to do that. They kind of fight each other a little bit, like the Tusken Raiders and Cobb Van. They, they kind of don't like each other. But Mando tries to get everybody under control. And then they all decide they're going to help each other come back to the city to get with some more people to recruit them to also try to take out the dragon. Well, actually, right before that, the Tusken Raiders, Mando, and... Kai Vanth all go to the Sarlacc pit, uh, the old this old Sarlacc pit cave basically where the crate dragon sleeps, and they try to lure him out with a um, a mammoth thing. I forgot what it's called, um, a banter I think or something like that. So they try to le lead <laughs> lead uh, like try to trick it to eat that so they could try to take it out. It ate the Tusker Raider instead, threw everybody off. Then they decide to recruit more people, come up with plans, explosives to try to take out the crate dragon. They go there uh, at the end, uh, or towards the end of the, the show, of course, they're all, they, it doesn't go quite as planned. They're trying to take out the crate Dragon, and then he fully comes out. They try to, of course, try to blow it up, try to shoot it. Doesn't work. And then it goes back on the ground and comes out of like the mountain part or the cliff part of the cave, spewing like this, this acid, taking raiders out left and right. Mando and Kai Vanth are flying around with the rockets, trying to take it out. Then there's one like banther left with a bunch of explosives on it. And Mando basically grabs it and is like, you get out of here. He basically forces him to by like clipping his rockets to shoot him off. So that way it's just Mando, the explosives with the banther, and then the crate dragon. He gets swallowed up, but the banther has to spit up Mando because he's like shocking him with his like his his little hunter uh, pit, uh, shotgun thing. I forgot the name of it. No, hey, look, I'm excited right now. And then he explodes, blows up the crate dragon. Woo! Yeah! And once that's over, um, they like the Tusker Raiders wanted this silver thing that was within the mouth of, or within the body of the crate dragon. And then uh, Mando's pretty much on his way. And then they show this figure looking at everything. And when he turns around, it's Boba Fett. So Boba Fett is in the episode at the very end. He makes an appearance, which makes you wonder it. I'll be coming back to Tatooine for some more, you know, stuff. And did Boba Fett more or less, if not finish off, do something with the um, other bounty hunter from ep from that episode five of season one? Because his spurs walking up to uh, wasn't it Ming Na Wen, the actress who played the bounty hunter in episode five like did something with her. So we're going to see, most likely we're going to see how that plays out. How bad is it for the Mandalorians? Do we get Bo-Katan in this? It sounds like we get Sabine to some degree. We might be, be Ahsoka supposed to make an appearance. So they're opening up the world of Star Wars for sure in this, in that it's going to be it, out of rim. That we're not, we're going to get some unfamiliar stuff, at least for me, probably. One of, some, one of the callbacks I noticed was an, an R5 unit that Peli Motto has at her mechanic shop. I, isn't R5 the droid that Luke didn't want <laughs> in episode four? Because they had like a busted uh, like tin top or whatever. And so that's how he ended up getting R2-D2. 
I think R5 was that same unit because R4 was Obi-Wan's unit in episode two and possibly three. That was R4 for Obi. So I would imagine R4, R, uh, R5 has to be that same R unit that um, Luke dismissed for R2-D2. But let me know down in the comments below, correct some of the stuff that either I didn't uh, quite know or couldn't remember the names of. I'm open for that in the comics uh, section, but I'm super excited for episode two. Episode one was about 47 minutes or so, so thank you for being more of a lengthy side and actually being fun to watch. It's just good to see and have some new content to watch on Disney Plus, Star Wars on top of that. And then in November, supposedly we might be getting WandaVision. I know it's not Star Wars related, but nonetheless, Star Wars is back on Disney Plus. Episode two should be dropping next Friday. I'm excited. I wish they dropped two episodes for, to start us off. The one thing I also wanted to say was it definitely seems like all the teasers we got for The Mandalorian, a lot of those teasers or within that teaser trailer and the, that we kept getting, most of those scenes were from episode one of season two. There was only like two or three other moments in the teaser trailer that was from another episode. So for all we know, we might have only been teased the first couple episodes of The Mandalorian. That is good marketing. Got us all hyped up just off of one episode. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Filoni and Favreau. We about to have fun with this. You guys haven't already? Ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos. So we can sit back, chillax, and see what's cracking. But your boy Versatile signing out. And until the next video, wait for it.